Hello everyone. In this session, I will take up another topic that is secondary growth in dicot stem. In plants, growth is caused by apical meristem. Growth is caused by apical meristem. Apical meristem. This apical meristem is present in stems. It is present in stems and apices of roots and it is also observed in branches it is present in stems and root apices stem apices branch apices and this apical meristem causes linear growth it causes linear growth Apart from this, there is corresponding increase in the thickness of the plant body, increase in thickness of stems and roots and branches. This increase in growth of thickness is called secondary growth. Secondary growth is nothing but increase, increase in growth of thickness, growth of thickness is called secondary growth this secondary growth is observed in dicots dicots and gymnosperms gymnosperms are you understand secondary growth is absent in monocots it is absent in monocots exceptionally some monocot genera shows secondary growth in anomalous way examples for that anomalous secondary growth is dracaena dracaena and yucca yucca in these plants secondary growth occurs in anomalous way these two are monocotyledons they belongs to monocots but they shows secondary growth in anomalous way or understand in dicot stem increase in thickness of the stem occurs in two ways or two methods first method is intrastellar secondary growth intrastellar secondary growth and second method is extrastellar secondary growth extrastellar secondary growth this extra stellar secondary growth is also called cortical secondary growth cortical secondary growth or understand now i will explain intra stellar secondary growth in the transfer section of primary dicot stem in the stem the vascular bundles are arranged in the form of a circle this is steel of primary dicot stem in the primary dicot stem vascular bundles are arranged in the form of a ring for suppose these are vascular bundles these all are vascular bundles and they are arranged in the form of a ring i understand <coughs> in the vascular bundle xylem and phloem are present for suppose this is xylem and this is phloem xylem and phloem xylem and phloem right in between the xylem and phloem there is cambium cambium is present between xylem and phloem this is cambium this cambium is called fascicular cambium the cambium which is present between xylem and phloem is called fascicular cambium fascicular cambium it is also called intrafascicular cambium or intravascular cambium this fascicular cambium is also called vascular cambium and the cambium present between xylem and phloem is called 
intrafascicular cambium because it is present in the vascular bundle so that it is called intrafascicular cambium next in between the vascular bundles in between the vascular bundles there are medullary rays medullary rays are present these medullary rays develops or produce interfascicular cambium these are the medullary rays these medullary rays producing interfascicular cambium this is interfascicular cambium that means cambium which is present between vascular bundles is called interfascicular or intervascular cambium okay the cambium which is developing from medullary rays then joined with the fascicular cambium you can also observe that this is interfascicular cambium this is intrafascicular cambium these two cambia are joined together and they form a continuous ring this is a continuous ring and further the cambial insulins are the cambium cells divide and to produce new cells on the either side that means this cambium producing cells on the either side which the cells divides repeatedly by periclinal divisions and produce new cells on the either side that produce new cells on the either side the cells which are producing towards the inner side are differentiated to form secondary xylem the differentiate to form secondary xylem and the cell which are present or which are produced outside are differentiated to form secondary phloem secondary phloem this secondary phloem is also called bast it is also called bast and the secondary xylem here is called wood it is called wood this secondary phloem consists of sieve tubes companion cells and phloem parenchyma phloem fibers and secondary xylem contain xylem tracheids xylem tracheids xylem vessels and xylem fibers xylem parenchyma these all are the elements of secondary xylem generally more secondary xylem is formed towards the inner side than the secondary phloem that means more amount of secondary xylem is formed than the secondary phloem okay actually in the cambium two types of insulins are present <coughs> in the cambium two types of insulins are present they are number 1 fusiform insulins fusiform insulins second type of insulins are ray insulins fusiform insulins produce secondary xylem secondary xylem and secondary phloem that means which produces vascular tissues next ray insulins these ray insulins produce phloem rays phloem rays and xylem rays xylem rays they produce phloem rays towards the outside they produce phloem rays towards the outside and xylem rays to inside are you understand these phloem rays and xylem rays are collectively called secondary medullary rays they form secondary medullary rays are you understand in most of the dicots after formation of secondary xylem and secondary phloem primary vascular tissues are crushed that means primary phloem and primary xylem are crushed and they are replaced with secondary xylem and secondary phloem this is about intrastellar secondary growth that means that occur inside the steel 
in the next class i will explain extra stellar secondary growth that is cortical secondary growth thank you